Christmas Eve, Eve, I hope you're all doing really well. Welcome back to a, another Vlogmas. It is, what time is it? 21 past 10, so I'm just going out for a run. And we've got a fun little day planned today. We're going out for some tapas with Sam's family in like my favourite part of our city so I'm really excited about it but this morning I'm just making myself a coffee having a bit of a tidy up of the house and I'm going to make myself some breakfast while Sam's out on his run because that just sums the two of us up. I'm going to have one of my favourite things to have over Christmas. These to me just scream Christmas like it was one of our biggest family traditions to have these Christmas day so every time I have them that is just what it reminds me of so I'm going to make myself some of those today we've got three lots of these we've got the pan of chocolate and the croissants Sam doesn't like cinnamon so looks like I'm going to have to eat all of these ones so I'm just going to make myself some little cinnamon swirls have a coffee and then we're going to get ready together Um. And yeah, have a nice little Christmassy day. I also need to do a bit of baking today because we're going to take round a dessert to Sam's family. They're hosting Christmas this year, so I thought I'd make a dessert with us. Um, so we need to go get the ingredients for that. So yeah, it's just like a little bit of a Christmassy prep fun little Christmas Eve Eve today. changed a bit since the last time I had done them. The last time I had them, the like cinnamon already came in the roll, so you literally just cut it into six bits and then whack it in the oven. But this time they've like separated the cinnamon, so you spread the cinnamon on, then you roll it and then you cut it. So a little bit more involved, but they are 100% worth it. If you haven't tried these yet, definitely give them a go. And if you've got time to get them before Christmas, they're such a nice little Christmas morning breakfast. But I guess it depends what your traditions are for Christmas because Sam's family don't have breakfast on Christmas day. They might have like a little tiny something but then they have their massive roast dinner, like their massive Christmas dinner at like 12 o'clock. So they don't tend to have anything before but I always grew up having Christmas dinner as like an evening dinner at like four or five o'clock in the evening and then we'd have like a really nice Christmas breakfast with like bacon rolls, pastries, orange juice, bucks fizz, that kind of thing. And I have to say, I prefer my family's way of doing it. I think it's probably just because I'm what, what I'm used to. But even when we have like a Sunday dinner, we never have it at like lunchtime. We always have it as an evening dinner. Um, I've never been one for like a huge lunch, so that's probably where it comes from. But me and Sam have adapted the little Christmas breakfast tradition. So we always get these in, even when we go straight to his mum and dad's to have a roast dinner after at like 12 o'clock. So we're going to be very full before we even had our Christmas dinner this year but I literally can't go without these Christmas morning it's a favourite um but yeah anyway this morning I need to have a bit of a I'm trying to work out when to do like my fake tan my shaving I've seen a lot of um people on TikTok questioning the same because obviously you want it to be fresh for Christmas and I'm going down south on boxing day so I'd like my tan to last then just like working it all out trying to time your hair wash I've really not timed the hair wash situation right because i washed my hair yesterday so i'll probably wash it again for christmas day it just you know when it doesn't sync up it doesn't line up with your plans so you end up having to like double wash it or go a little bit greasy but it's christmas so i think i will be washing my hair again but yeah i'm just gonna wait for my pastries to come out i'm so excited about that i'm gonna make myself a coffee and i will show you them when they are all done <laughs> I'm just laughing that I've got this massive wooden board. <laughs> Sam's got his scrambled eggs. I reckon post you can eat them. I wouldn't put it past me, you know. They are really easy to eat. I'm gonna give it a good go. I've just got out of the shower and I've just done my skincare and stuff, but I've introduced two 
more products. This one isn't a new product, but um, I've had it in my skincare trolley and it was sort of like at the back and I've just kind of forgotten about it, so I've not been using it. Um, but two new products into my morning and night routine. This one is the UK Lash. I've gone out on about these before. I was um, working with them on a couple of videos, so I did kindly get sent this, but I would pay for it and I would buy it over and over again because the results of this, honestly, I thought it was a fad. I thought it was just, you know, ads adding and people just kind of like making out that this product was working a lot better than what it was. But I can 100% hand on heart say that the power of this product is literally insane. My lashes grew so much. I actually took before and after pictures so you can like clearly, clearly see it in the pictures. I don't know if I've still got those on my phone. Um, but the transformation was literally crazy. I actually had, I'm going to look wild by the way, I've just popped a spot so I've got a tissue on my chin. I wasn't going to show you but this part of my eye, I don't know if it's going to focus, you know like near your tear duct. I was actually applying the product too close to my tear duct and I started getting lashes growing there so it just shows the power of the product. So insane for lash growth um, if you're on a lash growth journey, if you've been like over treating your lashes and stuff like that and you want them to grow quicker or you just want longer lashes, 100% would use this. So I started using this morning and night again. And then this is a bit of a new product I have not used. I was sent some toothpastes by this brand, Gen. We're actually using the apple mint flavour we've also got a cinnamon mint flavour and a coconut and mint flavour which i'm really excited to try i love the flavour of this but they did also send me their whitening pen so the first morning i've used it is this morning um so i'll obviously keep you posted on the results but it's just a little um sorry it's hard to do one handed it's just a little brush that you brush the whitening stuff on after you've um brush your teeth so I'm going to use that morning and night and I will keep you updated but yeah they're just a couple of new products that I am um, keeping at the front of my trolley so that I remember to use them I love this trolley by the way this is from Ikea but I think they do them in the range as well it just slots perfectly underneath our sink and I just use it to keep all of my skincare my like shower products my face cloths and flannels and stuff like that, my razors, it's just the perfect little storage solution for all of those little bits and bobs in the bathroom. Okay, I'm looking wild but I just got out of the shower, I did my skincare, I caught up with the enemy when I was talking to you about those um, products but I thought we could do a little get ready with me, I never do these because I'm just not a makeup girl, like my makeup bag is probably like a trip down memory lane for, for most people because I just use really like classic old products not into like all the new viral stuff that goes around all the time and I just don't really know my stuff when it comes to makeup to be totally honest with you so don't really feel like in a position to do get ready with me but I thought I'd show you what I do anyway we can have a little chatty get ready and I'll show you the products I use um, and my sort of everyday go to routine as you probably know by now i don't really like wearing makeup which is why why you'll normally see me in my videos without any makeup on because i don't like the feeling of it on my skin i think i've got a bit of a thing from struggling with my acne and my spots and i've kind of like mentally linked it to wearing makeup which i know isn't the case like wearing makeup doesn't necessarily lead to spots or equal spots but i just feel like in my head i'm like to try and keep my skin as clear as possible. I don't know, for me, like makeup just in my head leads to spots, which just makes me hate it and hate the feeling of it on my skin. I freak out if it's on my skin for too long and I can feel it like soaking into my skin and stuff. I don't know, I feel like I've got a bit of a thing there with it, which is why I don't really wear it. But when I have to wear it, this is the routine that I go with. So to prime, I don't actually use a primer. I use my, um, Inky List SPF and this is the, I feel like this is a cheat code because it's a two in one product and I have tried using primers before, have I still got it, let me see, I used, here it is, see this is one of those moments that I bought into like a viral TikTok thing that was going around on TikTok and don't get me wrong I'm sure this worked really well for a lot of people and it is a really good brand from what I've heard. Again, I don't really know much about makeup anyway so I wouldn't really know much about the brand but I've used a couple of their things before that I've quite liked. 
but I bought this um, pore filter primer and it clogged my pores straight away. It broke me out and I know it was this thing because it's the only thing that I introduced. And I was thinking like, if it's a pore filter, obviously it's going in my pores to smooth them out. Or that's what I think it would be doing anyway. Um, so a little thing that if you do suffer from breakouts and acne and whatever, have a look in your makeup bag as well. Because I feel like we, like we, this sounds a bit contradictory to what I was just saying, but I feel like we instantly think it's skincare. And I know from my personal experience, I've sometimes not looked too closely into my makeup bag and the products that I'm using on my face in that regard. So primers and stuff like that can clog your, pore, your pores and lead to breakouts and stuff like that. So had to ditch that straight away but this is like my holy grail for priming my skin because obviously it's an spf as well so it's ticking that box but it also works as a really good hydrating primer like my skin looks so glowy and dewy when i use this so i've slathered my face in that and then i don't really wear foundation when i do wear foundation um i tend to go for where is it I tend to go for the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk because this is like the finish that I like the most. It feels like a second skin, looks really dewy, looks really natural. I was going through a phase of using the Charlotte Tilbury, all the writing's come off of it, but the Charlotte Tilbury um, Flawless Filter. But then I had a few comments of people saying that this broke them out as well. So I've been kind of staying away from that to be honest um, and then days where I don't want to wear a foundation but I want like a base I've been using excuse the absolute state of my bottles by the way but I've been using this super smoother by Iconic London and it works really nicely again this feels like a bit of a second skin um, and when my skin's not too bad and I don't need that much coverage this just lays down a nice base before I put my concealer on and stuff um, but do I want a bit of foundation today now let's just stick with the super smoother because I do really like this. I'm mixing two colours together when I've got tan on, but I've not got a single drop of tan on, so I don't think I need any of the darker one. I did have a little brush that I've been using. This is a Charlotte Tilbury brush. Um, Hollywood Complexion. I don't know if that's the name of the brush, but I've just been using this to like evenly spread it before using my sponge. Just so I've got a nice even coverage all over my face before I blend it in. Honestly, putting makeup on is such a nicer experience when you don't have like a ton of spots to cover up. It's that's another thing. Like I'm really fortunate with my skin now. Obviously, I'm going through a really good skin period, but when you've got spots and you're trying to cover them up with makeup, it's the worst because there's only so much you can do with makeup like you can never hide texture so I've not been absolutely hating it like I normally do <laughs> I wish I liked wearing makeup more I really wish I was one of those girls that came on the vlog looking 10 out of 10 every time but if I had the attitude I would never make videos because <laughs> I just don't wear makeup but anyway this is buildable so you can sort of like layer it depending on how much coverage you want but I tend to just use like one thin layer and then on areas where I want that bit more coverage I'll just put some concealer on make sure that's all blended in as well as possible I will usually use a little bit more on my chin area just because that's where I've got the most um scarring and stuff so I'll just dab on a little bit more with my sponge in that area make sure to blend it down as well i want to get color matched because i also feel like a lot of my products i use are the wrong color for my skin which is hard to get right because sometimes i've got tan on and when i have got tan on i'm a, just a completely different shade to what i normally am um but i've seen those machines that they use where they can literally like scan your skin and get an exact shade match so i think i I need to do that because I often end up with like a mask. So I just blend it down. Then for concealer, this is my holy grail concealer. I've used it since I was 13. I've never tried another one. I've never needed to try another one or use another one. It's like three, four pounds or something ridiculous like this. It's the Blast Imperfections 
they have brought out new um, versions and this is the hydrating one and I quite I quite like this um, especially under my under eyes because I find I can get quite dry skin under there and it can go quite crusty when I put concealer on so I love this my under eyes because it's really nice and hydrating and dewy so I'll just lay it down like that always got a snatch it up just to give myself a little facelift and if I've got any breakouts I would always put the concealer on my hand and then dab it on with my finger rather than dabbing the applicator on there I feel like it goes without saying but little things like that when you've got breakouts and stuff you need to remember I know it's so hard but I've picked up a lot of things like that during my little journey with acne I feel like you've just got to be on it with things that you don't really normally have to consider I usually leave it to sit on my under eyes for a little bit longer and then I'll just use my finger first off to just spread it around I feel like the warmth of your finger helps to spread the product a bit better than a sponge make sure it's all on my eyelids as well and then once it's like evenly spread I'll just use my sponge to just make sure it's all seamless then the next step I never used to bother with blush like a year or so ago I'd never before that I'd never use blush but I feel like it's my favourite step of makeup now and I like to use a liquid blush. Where's my other one? I mix these two together. So it's Rose Riot in this iconic London um, sheer blush, it's called. But it's like a really, really pale pink. So it's a little bit too light to what I'd usually go for. If you can see that. So then what I do is I use a little bit of this. I've had this one years. Max Factor Infused Cream Blush has the shade i think oh no sunlit sunlit coral is the shade it's worn off a bit but i can just about make that up make that out sorry and then i mix it together and those two make a really nice like peachy blush and i also love the like texture of it i feel like it's like a really nice glowy formula i think it's the iconic london one that's nice and dewy it looks a bit wild when I first put it on, but again, I just use my finger because I feel like it blends the product out a little bit better. I think it's the warmth of your finger that does that. And then I tap the excess off on my nose to make it look like I've caught the sun. Just blend it out as best as I can with my finger. Just keep working it in. And then go in with the other side of my sponge and just blend out the edges so that it's not just like a random patch on my face. And if the sponge takes away a little bit of the blush, because I find it normally does, I'll just top it up with my finger again, just on the apples of my cheeks. I just love blush. I feel like it makes you look so fresh and healthy. It gives you such a nice colour. Makes you look like you've been on holiday. Buff it out with the sponge again. And then, highlight. This is my favourite highlighter of all time. Again, it's a liquid. I tend to go for liquid products rather than powder because I just find that I like the like the finish of them and this is the Illa Mask Highlighter Beyond Liquid Highlighter in the shade Days. This is such a gorgeous product, I'll show you. I don't know if the camera's even going to pick that up but the shimmer on it is just insane. So I'll just dab a little bit of that onto my sponge and then dab the excess are off. I'll show you when I put this on. The glow. Don't know if you can pick that up on the camera, but I think that's my second fave. Underneath the blush would be the Illa Mask highlighter. I absolutely love it. It just sounded like I farted. It wasn't. It was my dressing gown rubbing against my chair. I dab a little bit on my nose with that as well. And it just makes you look like you've got like juicy skincare on which is my favourite kind of makeup look it just makes your skin look amazing right so once I've got those on I think I need a little bit more on my under eyes feeling like the bag's big today I've got really bad like acidy 
reflux type thing today i don't know if it's those pastries i said to sam i think pastry gives me really bad heartburn that's something my dad would say but <laughs> i never used to get heartburn i feel like it actually has come with age i remember my dad always used to mind about having heartburn i was like what does heartburn feel like like i've never had heartburn before and now the ripe old age of 26 i'm getting it for myself right so that's the base done, I think. So then I set it with, just make sure all the creases and my under eyes are out before we go in with the powder and set it. Then I just use the Fit Me Matte and Poreless on the under eyes, all the way up like that. Just use the setting powder on my chin as well. I don't set my whole face, I just set the areas that crease or get a little bit oily, which is like my T-zone and my chin. My jawline as well, just because I've got some scarring under there. Oh. I need some water. Oh, I've got really bad heart then. Then eyebrows. So, eyebrow products, I use the NYX, the brow glue, inventive name there, <laughs> I thought I was looking for something a bit um, out there but it's just called the brow glue, and then I use the NYX, 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 Lift and Snatch, I've got a couple of shades of this one, I've got the caramel one, and then I've got the ash brown i think the ash brown is more my natural brow color but if i go overboard and do too many brush strokes i find that my brows look really bold and massive so sometimes what i'll do is i'll take the lighter one it's a bit like old school ombre brows and i'll just do a few of the hairs at the front and just kind of use both of them to get more like a natural looking brow but I do prefer the ash brown, I think it looks more true to my brow colour and it looks like real brow strokes but I just try not to go overboard and just do a few little natural brushes but I love this because it looks like your real your real um, eyebrows, it doesn't look like you've just coloured them in, like you can actually draw on little hairs, the nib is so thin it works really nicely especially because I've got one brow that sits so much higher than the other so I can use it to like bring the other one down by drawing on the little hairs which is what I'm just doing now no um Christmas hasn't even come yet but I'm already seeing TikToks about like the new year new year new you and like vision boards and goals and all that kind of thing and every year for the past i want to say like three or four years now i've been one of those people that's made a vision board i know some people might look at that and think that is so like airy fairy really cringe like <laughs> obviously doesn't work why are you doing that how cringy what are you doing kind of thing and i used to be one of those people and what i do i don't print them out and i don't make a physical um vision board but i do quite like that because i think that's a nice way of doing it and it gives you like a little project to do um a bit of cutting and sticking but what i do and what i have done for the past few years is i make it my laptop screensaver and the whole point of vision boards is that you can see it all the time it's always in your vision like you either print it out make it stick it up in your bedroom or your office or your dressing room or even in your car just somewhere that you'll always see it without thinking about it too much it's just always there and you can see the things that you're working towards and the things that you want without you know consciously being like right i'm gonna get my vision board out and sit and study it and look at it it's just always there and it's like ingraining in your mind without it being like a labor and thing do you know what i mean so my vision board has always always been my laptop screensaver because how often do you see that and usually 
what I'd have as my screensaver would just be like the standard like Apple MacBook like what is it like a picture of a mountain or something like that do you know what I mean so I thought why not make something that's a bit more useful whether it, this was the first when I first started doing it whether or not it works I don't know everyone's doing it so I think I'm gonna get involved and you might as well use that space for something that's like a bit more worthwhile than a picture of a mountain or a sunset you know what I mean so if you've never made one before this is your sign to do it because if you, if you find it cringy, if you don't believe in all that stuff, if it's not for you, completely fair enough. I get that. I was that person as well. But there's nothing wrong with it. Like, just give it a go. And I think it's such a nice thing to do as well. I sit on Pinterest every, like, either late December when you're in those in-between days between Christmas and New Year and you haven't got anything to do. Scroll on Pinterest and just get some ideas. And the first few times I did it, I didn't really know what to put on there. So I'd get, like, inspiration from other people. But so many things I've put on those boards have happened and I don't think it's just like it's not magic it's not you don't just put it on there and then it comes true obviously it's to give you direction and it's to give your like efforts and your work direction obviously they're not gonna they're not gonna happen they're not gonna come true unless you put the work in I think that's where people get um like a bit wrong with those things they get it wrong because they think that you just put it on a vision board and it comes true obviously you've got to work to get there but it's just add in direction like you wouldn't get in an uber and be like and not tell it where to go and expect to get to your destination do you know what i mean but so many things on my vision board happened this year and i made them happen um and it's so nice to just look back and think like this time last year when i put those on my vision board they were just an idea they were just a picture on pinterest like they didn't really mean anything at that point but now they've happened and now they're reality so that is something i will be doing after christmas as i say probably in the time between christmas and new year you know those days where you don't know what day of the week it is you're sitting there eating the leftovers like you're in a bit of a post christmas days and you haven't got anything to do if you don't have to go back to work obviously if you're lucky enough to have that time off work I make a vision board if you haven't already and set it as your laptop screensaver that would be my top tip or print it out make a pretty vision board to put up on your wall um but i find it is easy, easiest to do it digitally and then just have it as your screen or your phone screensaver actually that's another good one i might do a version for my phone as well so how many times do you look at that without thinking about it and things as well so say for example the things that i've put on there from like this year that didn't happen there were things on there that i was so close to like so so close to but they've not quite happened yet so i'll carry it over so those things that were on the board that didn't quite happen this year i'll carry it over on my 2024 vision board and then maybe when it's like 2025 new year they would have happened this year do you know what i mean so yeah, I love doing that. I absolutely love doing that. And I feel like it's such a good way to sort of start integrating things like that into your lifestyle. If you don't know where to start or if you feel a bit overwhelmed with like, um, you know, like manifesting things and things like that. If it feels a bit out of reach for you or in a bit of a realm that's out of your comfort zone, I feel like a vision board is such a good place to start. And I'm not like heavily into it. Like I don't practice it every single day. I feel like I subconsciously manifest things in my life. I feel like I have accidentally and subconsciously manifested things in my life, which make, might make me sound bizarre. Um, but I think vision boards are such a lovely idea. So this is your sign to get one done this year. And we'll all set our screensavers as our little 2024 vision boards and I'm really excited to make one of those anyway I've just done my mascara I use this brand I was kindly sent this but I absolutely love it I feel like the recipe to a successful mascara is the wand and this wand is like my perfect type of wand I've got really long eyelashes but they're very straight so anything too clumpy doesn't really work for me um, I really like this one. Anyway, next step is bronzing. And this is an OG product. My mum has used this for so many years and I love it as well. It's just the Rimmel 
radiance brick it's like a really nice light bronze it's not too orange or deep in colour it just gives you like a really nice sheen to your face so I'll go in with this one first and I don't bronze my whole face I only bronze like my cheekbones here my temples and then just around the edge of my face a little bit down here and I kind of like stamp rather than pull because I feel like if you pull too much it makes your face look a bit muddy just go in with like a second bronze which is a little bit deeper than the first and I use a little bit less of this and I use it in more like smaller areas if that makes sense so I'm just like building it up and slowly layering it this is a sleek one this was only a cheap one it's the face form contouring palette by sleek but it's not that great to be honest it's just the only one that I've got um yeah so I just use that again I just sort of push it on rather than pull it I, I tend to find it makes your face less like cakey and muddy and then I use this taupe shade here it's like a matte taupe shade to contour I knock off most of it though because it is really dark I just use a tiny bit to add a bit of contour and my jawline I always always for years have contoured my jaw like with powder contour I remember when me and Sam first met he thought that I had jaw filler because I always do such a <laughs> contour such a sharp jaw and then again other side I just sort of buff, buff it in a little bit so it's not so obvious. Right, let's let the fringe out. Whoa, she's wild. Need a little dry shampoo in that, I think. Oh, I'm going to try out the new natural teas. See what this is like. Oh, it smells nice. That fringe is bouncy today. <sighs> right, I'm just going to curl my hair sort my hair out and then I'll put a bit of lipstick on and that is pretty much it. Right, I'm all ready. Hi guys, I feel like that ended really abruptly. So apologies for that. I think last time we saw each other, I was getting ready, probably actually in this dressing gown, but it's now hours later, it's quarter to six. Um, but Sam's mum and dad turned up pretty much just after I'd finished doing my makeup so I just had to speed through getting ready because we had to set off and our table was booked but we had such a nice evening along, um, if anyone's familiar with Hull, um, along the fruit market and along Humber Street. It was so pretty. I actually took some pictures of the sky. Look how pretty it looks. We caught the sunset after our, I don't know it all, quick selfie. Um, we caught the sunset after our tapas and it was just such a nice evening look all the christmas lights were it's not going to focus is it mm. yeah there we go all of the um christmas trees were up and all the christmas lights were on so it was a really nice evening we had some tapas with sam's parents his sister 
her husband, their little baby. So it was just a really nice evening, but I didn't take my camera out with me. I don't like filming when I'm with family anyway, so we just enjoyed that time together. Um, but yeah, for the rest of the night, I'm gonna get a bath and that. We had a bit of sad news in the family today, so um, I'm gonna just get a bath and have a chilled evening, I think. Um, we did pop into Sainsbury's on the way home because I'm going to make a rocky road. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, I'm going to make a dessert to take over to Sam's parents for Christmas Day. Um, so I'm going to make a rocky road because I've made that a few times and Sam's sister absolutely loves it and his family just love it. So that's like my go-to because I know it's a crowd pleaser over at his family's house. So we just picked up some bits for that but I think we'll probably make that tomorrow I'm gonna do like a Christmas Eve vlog where so we can spend a fun Christmas Eve together we've got our little Christmas Eve box I want to take Lola for a nice walk um so yeah for the rest of tonight I'm just gonna have a pam pam I'm gonna take it easy um I feel quite wiped out to be honest um so yeah I'm gonna have a bath a shave an exfoliate prep for my fake tan I'm probably gonna tan tonight sleep in my tan wake up tomorrow freshly tanned um, and then we can spend a fun Christmas Eve together tomorrow. I literally cannot believe it's Christmas Eve tomorrow. Sam can't either. We were talking to his family and we, something was said about like, oh, I thought that was happening on, he said, oh, I thought that was happening on Christmas Eve. And I was like, it's Christmas Eve tomorrow. Like, so yeah, mental, but memory card is flashing now. So I'm gonna have to go, but I will see you tomorrow for a fun Christmas Eve. Thank you as always for spending another Vlogmas with me and I will hopefully see you tomorrow.